Hello everyone, welcome back to a summary of principle underlying total hip replacement for surgeons in training. Understanding a primary total hip arthroplasty, quoted or adapted from Alan Hammer, an author surgeon, a part 3 video. We are going to start off with division of the neck. Once the hip joint is exposed, it is dislocated and the femoral neck is divided. It is then remove the femoral head with a corkscrew. If necessary, cut a disc out of the femoral neck to allow space to insert the corkscrew. Dividing the neck about 1 cm above the lesser tocanter at an angle of 45 degree to the femoral shaft brings the cut out in the piriformis fossa. Nevertheless, other prosthesis can take advantage of the neck to support the femoral stem, sometimes because it has a collar. In this case, accurate cutting of the neck is vital. For acetabular rimming, removal of the femoral head allows visualization of the acetabulum, but then find that it is obscured by the soft tissue. A variety of specialized retractors are usually available on the set dedicated to the prosthesis. With the lateral approach in a supine patient, flexing the knee relaxes the tissue about the acetabulum, making it easier to gain access. With the posterior approach, hanging the leg of the decubitus patient over the side of the table helps to open up the hip joint and align the femur. Picture illustrated the position of a patient during a posterior approach. Division of the pubal femoral ligaments will allow the femur to drop slightly, opening further the soft tissue gap. The acetabulum is cleared of its labrum and of any soft tissue which it contains prior to rimming. The acetabulum is rimmed to remove any residual articular cartilage and get down to the subcortical bone which will, be, which will support wherever prosthetic cup it has to be inserted. The picture depicts the soft tissue in the hip joint region. Rimming for the cemented cup is done to allow a gap around the implant for the cement mantle while rimming for the uncemented cup is done to ensure a close fit with the prosthesis. In this case, the acetabular rimmer may not be hemispherical. Each different cup generally has its own rimmers. As illustrated, a hemispherical rimmer and its sizes. Regarding the insertion of the acetabular cup, 1. Sitting of the cup Medialization of the prosthetic cup reduces the loading of the prosthesis. Nevertheless, as this may shorten the abductor muscle, it is probably best to try and get the center of rotation of the femoral prosthetic head where it was originally in the natural hip. Next, number two is inclination of the cup. In inclination of the cup, the normal acetabulum is inclined to the horizontal at about 55 degree. It is aimed to incline the artificial cup between 40 and 50 degree. If the cup is inclined more than this, it is said to be open. And if it is inclined less than this, that means less than 40 degree, this is said to be close. Opening the cup adds to the mobility of the hip but makes it more likely to dislocate. Closing the cup adds to the stability of the hip but reduces the range of sagittal motion. The width of the, the picture shows an inclination angles with fixed antiversion of 0 degree. The width of the pelvic column holding the acetabulum limits the amount to which the cup can be closed, particularly 
if a large diameter cup is required to fill the rim acetabulum. Too large a cup will not be covered by the pelvis laterally. What is inclination? Inclination is the orientation of the cup in the coronal plane. As illustrated in this pelvic AP view, it shows an inclination is an angle between these two lines. The first line is a horizontal reference where the line across the ischial tuberosities. Number two line is the line across the rim of the cup. Okay, everyone. Next, we are going to discuss regarding number three, the version of the cup. There is a range of version of the normal acetabular from those facing backwards, that means retroversion, to those facing forward. We call it antiversion. Usually, the acetabulum is relatively neutral. However, to aid the movement of the leg and reduce the chance of impeachment of the femoral stem, the acetabular component is usually placed in about 10 degree antiversion. This picture depicts the acetabular cup antiversion ACA in the sagittal plane and the transverse plane. Number 4 regarding the cemented cup. When the acetabulum is rimmed, it is sized for the cup using the relevant trial cup. With cemented cups, the acetabular cavity is clean, preferably with a past lava system and dry. As illustrated in the left pelvic x ray, a cemented cup. The cement of desired viscosity is mixed and inserted with pressurization if possible. If specialized pressurizers are not available, a pad or inflated glove or even just the prosthesis itself will help to force the metacrylate into the bone interstices. As illustrated, a cemented cup with liner. Once the cup is inserted, it is angulated to the desired inclination and version using a special accompanying jigs or holders. When satisfied with the seating of this cup, holding instrument should be removed as it imparts hand movement to the cup, which, which push the cement away from it. At this stage, a rounded cup pusher is inserted which moves freely within the cup and allows a constant pressure to be maintained without moving the cut. Most of the extruded cement can be removed at this time while it is still soft. Once it's set, an osteostome or ronger is necessary to remove it. The acetabular insertion is now complete. Number 5. For uncemented cup. It requires very much careful rimming. The angle of rimming is particularly important if the correct inclination and version is to be obtained as the bone guides the prosthesis in the direction of the rimming. The rimmers for this cup will be either hemispherical, cylindrical or conical, depending upon the type of cup to be inserted. It may or may not be appropriate to use a trial cup, depending on the prosthetic system. The cup is inserted or its shell is inserted and held with the appropriate fixation before its in the lining is sited in place. The uncemented acetabular insertion is now complete. This picture shows a cementless acetabular cup system. Regarding a femoral rimming, the femoral rimming is influenced by the decision to use a curved or straight stem 
straight stem stem and whether you wish to insert it with or without cement. Curve stem, that is that portion below the junction of the neck of the neck are designed to match the curvature of the upper femur and may also have an element of torsion in them. In this case, a specific stem for the right side and one for the left side are required. Straight stems, on the other hand, may be used on either side with equanimity. As illustrated, a segmentless total hip arthroplasty. Within a circle that will present later, there is a collar, collar present. It is uncommon for a usage of a sharp grasp, particularly if applied with a machine to penetrate an osteoporotic femoral cortex and the initial channel down the inside of the femur should be made by hand with a blunt instrument. A long, narrow, rounded curette is an ideal. Once this initial tunnel is made, it is more accurately guides the definitive remus. It is important when preparing for a straight stem prosthesis to cut a slot out laterally into the top of the greater trochanter. This allows the stem to pass directly down the middle of the femoral madala. If it is not done, the curvature of the neck will cause the stem to pass into various positions. The remus will cut out the space for the prosthetic stem. Remus for cemented stems are usually oversized to allow for the cement mantle. Remus for the uncemented prosthesis allow the prosthesis to fit more snugly into the bone. Fixation of the uncemented prosthesis is proportional to the area of contact between it and the bone. Technological innovation is sometimes utilized by fashioning the bone to the prosthesis using a computer-controlled robotic remus. Alternatively, the prosthesis is fashioned to the bone using machine with a computer-aided design to mill the prosthesis to fit the bone in-house while the operation is still continuing. Regarding the insertion of the femoral components, once the rimming is complete, the appropriate size of the stem is selected. If trial femoral prosthesis is available, an initial test reduction may be made before opening and using the definitive prosthesis. In some systems, the rimming brush acts as a trial and can be used as such after fitting a trial femoral hip to it. When the trial is inserted and the hip reduced, the leg should be put through its normal range of movement and its stability assessed. The trial will allow assessment of the positioning and function of the components and indicate any final adjustment which may be necessary to improve the seating of the components and length of the prosthetic femoral head. Very occasionally, the trial prosthesis indicates that you have got it just wrong and should start again. When you are satisfied with the position of the components, insert the definitive femoral component. For a cemented prosthesis, the femoral madala should be clean and bloodless. Pressurization of the cement enhanced by sealing off the distal part of the shaft by a plug of bone or a specific cement restrictor. The prosthesis is prepared before inserting the cement and placed in an easily accessible position. The cement is inserted with a cement gun and then the femoral prosthesis is inserted in the direction 
expectation and to the death indicated by the trial. Well, as illustrated earlier, a semen restrictor. When the prosthesis is cited, extraneous, extruded, semen is removed and the prosthesis is maintained in position until the semen has set. If a modular stem is being used, a trial from a head can be applied to allow a second trial to be performed before applying the definite metal or ceramic head. The picture shows an example of modular revision stem. For B, uncemented prosthesis. The definitive prosthetic femoral stem is inserted as a press fit. As a close fit, it is required the last stage of insertion, a degree of hammering to impact the prosthesis to the selected depth. Impact using the dedicated stem impactor as hammering on the stem of a modular prosthesis may damage its trunion, making it difficult and unsafe to apply the femoral head. The picture shows of an impactor. Be careful when impacting the stem not to split the femoral shaft, which is quite easy to do, particularly if the bone is osteoporotic. If worried, by the possibility of a fracture, support the upper femur with a bone clamp or a temporary cyclage wire. After the area has been irrigated to remove any debris which may lead to early wear, the hip is reduced for the final time and the wound is closed. As illustrated, a bone holding forcep to support the bone. As for the wound closure, hematoma can act as a foreign body and can easily become infected. Its quantity should be reduced by using a sharp suction drain introduced into the wound before the closure. Closure of the wound in layers, carefully opposing and suturing the individual layers from the depth to the surface with suture material of the appropriate strength. If there is a problem opposing the layers across the femur, it may help to suture them through the, through the drill holes in the bone. Lastly, regarding the post-operative support, the operation has left the hip somewhat unstable and, and it is customary to support the leg for a few days post-operatively in an attempt to prevent dislocation of the prosthesis. The usage of Chanli pillow, a wedge-shaped foam pillow which kept the legs abducted during the immediate post-operative cause, the position of the great stability, or it may be a simple gutter splint can be used. The picture shows a chanli pillow that is widely or commonly used. Yay! Finally, we have reached the end of our video. See you again in the next one. Take care and bye!